women come into Beth Shalom and they're wearing what is called in Yiddish a schleyer. A schleyer is a veil. And this is what Tamar put on at the crossroads. She took off her widow's weeds and she put on a schleyer. And because of the fact that she was sitting there with this schleyer, she was assumed to be a harlot. What she was doing, however, was fulfilling the Leverite uh, law because her first two husbands, uh, actually the brother of the of the of the first husband, did not fulfill the duty, and Yehuda had promised his third son. But when the boy grew up, he did not fulfill the promise. So now when Yehuda comes by and sees this harlot, she is actually able to get out of the bargain twins. And one of them we know from the uh, genealogy and from uh, Ruth, the book of Ruth, uh, his name means to break out uh, like uh, from a breach or to cause a breach. And Tamar herself fits, figures into the genealogy of Moshek ben David. And the point that we're making is even to this day, when Moses is read, there is a veil. There is a veil, a slayer. The word is Sheen Lamad Yod Yod Ayan Resh, S H L E I E R, slayer. There's a slayer covering the hearts of the hearers. And when he came from the Galilee, he came as a humble Galilean peasant rabbi. And many could not see beyond that. And the Yeshiva Bokers who boasted in their knowledge and in their standing and in their chief seats and their titles looked down their noses at him and were jealous of him and could not see who he was. And very often God hides himself from us when our hearts are not right and here was Yehuda, and he had wronged this woman. And now he could not see that it was this woman that was sitting by the road because of the veil. And there's a veil that you must get past. Because if you're looking at a dead ribby in Queens, you won't be able to see the real ribby in Israel, the one whose tomb is empty. There will be a veil over your heart, and even your eyes will have a certain inability to pierce through. And this is not what God wants. And when you humble your heart and turn to the Lord, the veil is removed. And I want to pray tonight that Ribi Malachamoshiach incognito 
will be discerned. He will be seen. He will be understood, recognized, and received. Moshiach ben Dovid, I thank you. It took 28 years for me to see you. He said, Philip, have you been with me so long and you still don't know me? My incognito is still something you're struggling with. You cannot recognize me. There's a veil over your heart, possibly even over your eyes. You cannot recognize me. He who has seen me, the Bar Enosh has seen the Atik Yomin. He is the image of the Elohim Ha'av. And when Elohim Ha'av sent his word to heal us and deliver us from our destructions, he sent him in a way that was veiled. And those who have eyes to see can see him. Those who have ears to hear can hear him. Tomorrow we're going to be preaching and there are going to be women sitting in the audience with veils on their face like Tamar. And we're going to be praying that the veil will be removed over their heart. It's one thing to have a veil on your face. It's something else to have a veil on your heart. That veil was on my heart for 28 years. It was not until my heart was broken by the preaching that convicted me when I had come to the end of myself, when I saw the corrupt condition of my life, when the Lord finally opened my eyes to see how lost I was, how much in trouble I was with a holy God who is an impartial judge. And then the Lord brought me to a place where I could cry out. And whoever cries out, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But the Lord that you're crying out to is a living Lord. He's not a dead idol. He is real. He is alive. But he is, in some sense, incognito. This woman took her widow's weeds, her widow's garment off. She changed clothes. And she put on a veil, a slayer, and she went down to sit where she knew Yehuda would see her. She was incognito, and the very one that he had an obligation to, he could not recognize. My friend, you have an obligation to Yeshua HaMashiach. It's not his fault that you don't recognize him. It's your fault. And Yehuda said, it's not her fault, it's my fault. You have to see whose fault it is that you're not turning to the Lord. And these people with so-called Jews for Judaism, which was really founded by Rav Shaul of Tarsus, who find fault with the Savior, but don't find fault with themselves. They are in the same guilty position as Yehuda, and they need to realize their guilt and come clean with God. When you are guilty, and you know you're guilty, and you're convicted, and you weep, and you cry out to God for forgiveness, good things start to happen for you. But as long as you are self-righteous and hard-hearted and without any tears of remorse, there's nothing going to change in your life. 
Moshiach ben Dovid, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for taking 28 years to see past the incognito, to see the Zunfunderoibishter, the Son of God, disguised as a peasant rabbi from the Galilee. Moshiach ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. Hallelujah. And everybody said, Amen.